One way to earn some money with your games is to have assets that players can buy to customize their experience. So in this video, we are going to see how we can use the Loot Locker's dashboard to create assets and how we can use the API to retrieve the assets data and create this shop that you can see on the right side of the screen. So let's get started. So here we are on the Loot Locker's dashboard. The first thing that we are going to do is to go to content and then we already are on the asset options. We can create a new asset on this green button on the top right of the screen. So add asset and then let's name the asset Iron Mouse because I'm going to use the Iron Mouse skin. And then we have context, but we are not going to work with context at this moment. So I'll just keep this feature unlocked here. And we are going to be presented with lots of options, a lot of parameters to mess with. This is how we can manage this asset. So the first thing that we will need to do is to toggle this asset Percival because we want to earn money, right? I will increase this the price to 500 and save. But you can see that there are lots of other options. For instance, if this is an universal asset, uh, you can toggle this on. So for universal assets are assets that everyone can use. Then we have the variation. Variations are like, yeah, variations of this asset. So for instance, this is a narrow man sort of skin. Let's say that once in a while a player can get a blue version of this asset. We can add this variation here. Platform properties. This is very important, especially if you want to try to sell this asset on, let's say, Google Play Store. This is how you link this asset to the product that you are selling on the Google Play Store. Uh, if you want to know how this Play Store and everything of this works, please leave a comment below because I'm thinking about making a series about making game mobile games with Godot. So uh, feedback will be very will be very good about that. Then we have the most important part, which is this filters and storage part, because this is where we upload the actual assets files. So I will click right here and go to the asset that I'm going to sell. The, the actual file will be the scene file, so the Godot scene file, because when we when the players try to gather this on their machine, they will click and Godot will load this scene from the Loot Locker server and recreate this screen this skin on the player's machine. So this is how this will work. There we have there I have the all the, the skins, the, the scene files from the skins that I have on Moon Teaser, and the Iron Mouse scene file is right here. So I'll select this, and then I will also upload a, an image that will represent the, that I will use to represent this asset on the shop, because the shop will use texture buttons, and then the, the texture of these buttons will be the, this image that I am uploading here. So pictures, Moon Teaser database, Iron Mouse. Let's save this. And in order for Loot Locker to actually consider that this asset is retrievable so that we can use the API to get access to this asset, we have to toggle it active. There we have it. So now we have an active Percival asset to retrieve it. So how do we present this to players? How we can use this information, how we can gather this asset and use this data on our game? Let's see how Loot Locker's API can help us with that. So in order to get our assets from the Loot Locker servers and present them to players, we can make an API call, so a <laughs> HTTP request, to this URL. We make a GET request to this URL, and we can use some filters to get exactly what we want. So you can see that in this example we are using the Percival uh, filter, but there are other filters available as well. So Percival, not Percival, Rentable, not Rentable, Popular, not Popular. And also we need to pass how many assets do we want to get from this call. So we can pass uh, from 1 to 200. And after that we need to pass an offset so that the API knows from where it should start counting from. So you can see that on this other example here there is the same call. But we are saying that we, we want a count, we want to get assets after this one here. So this is the idea of the last asset. of of the first asset actually that it should start counting from. So we want to get 10 assets after this asset here and all them are possible. And after we make this call, we should wait for a response that looks quite complex here in this example, but don't get scared by this example because you are going to see that it is way simpler than it looks like here. 
let's actually see how this works on Godot Engine. Let's go there. So this is the scene that represents the, the shop and the player's inventory. Uh, we are not going to see how inventory works on this video. It, it's going to be the next video of this series, so I'll take this off. And let's focus on the shop side of this logic. So I'll open this script, the shop script, and let's see how this works. So I have the I have the, the URL here, so you can see that is the URL that we just saw. And I'm asking it to send me the first 50 assets that it finds. And all, all of them should be purchasable. We can see that the header of this call should also have the this X session token that we st have stored on the loot locker sing singleton. And we have the get method, the request here. So we make the request using the URL, the header, we don't want SSL certification, and we use the get method here. Then we yield for the response and gather this body and convert it. Uh, it we are going to get a JSON structure uh, response, and we just want to parse it as a string, actually as a dictionary. Then for each asset in the response, which we can access them uh, via this assets key, because this turned into a dictionary, right? So we are accessing, accessing, <laughs> accessing the assets key. Uh, we are going to do the following. We have the scene URL. Remember that we uploaded a scene file in the filters and files when we created the, the asset using the dashboard. This is how we access which URL this file is host, hosted. So we access the, the assets, the asset, which is a, a dictionary as well. And then we go to the files key and we get the first file key, the first index of this array because this file is an array. And then this also returns a dictionary. So we go to the URL key. This will return the URL in which this file is hosted, is hosted on the loot locker servers. Uh, the same goes for the image that we uploaded as well. So, but instead of the first index, we go to the second index. And then we have the asset ID. I have this Play Store ID because I actually use Perceval, actually, actually Perceval X assets on Moon Teaser. So I really need this Play Store ID here to recreate everything that will link this asset to the actual asset on the on the Play Store. So this is not necessary if you if you are not selling this on your on your game. You don't need to to access this or store this in any form. Then I have this method here that create skin buttons. Let's see what is a skin button because this is quite important for this logic. A skin button is this, a texture button that has an HP request node as well. And what it does is that it has some variables that is, for instance, the skin image URL that we just saw how we get this. The skin scene URL, same thing, we just saw how we get this. The asset ID that we are getting on the, the shop method the Play Store ID that we are getting there as well. And then when this is ready, it basically just straightforward make it make a call. And this is very important. This is it's quite important actually. Uh, we get we yield for the, the response. We are asking this URL here. So we are making a request to the image URL saying, hey, what is in this URL here? Give me give me the, the file that is in this URL here that's hosted here, there. And we retrieve that, we yield for the response, we retrieve that, and we recreate this as a texture file. So we have this image texture, we create a new image texture, we have this image here, and then we tell the image to load a PNG from a buffer, because this file here is going to be a very weird file <laughs> with many, I, I think they're quite a binary uh, file. And then we just convert this binary, this buffer, to a PNG image, and we set the, the skin to, to be this, this image that we just created. So texture normal is going to be this skin here. Uh, did, did you understood that? This is how we take the, the image that we uploaded to the loot locker servers and pick it from the loot locker servers and convert, make all this conversion to make this skin button actually have the texture that we want it to have. This is how we present all the the, the assets on the shop. So back to the shop logic. Let's go to the screen here. We create this button. So basically this just take all this data that we just gathered from the, the asset in the response that we are getting here and create the button that we just saw. So it inject all this data on this button. So 
we have this the button image URL that we just saw that is this thing here uh, it is going to be injecting all of this and then it added as a child of the grid because this is a screw container and it has a grid container this is how it distribute all the, the, the assets that, and present it in a beautiful way and after that we connect all of the we connect the preset signal from this button to this method right here but this is as i said more of a purchase and billing logic so we are not going to to see this on this feed on this particular video and this is it if we save the scene and test this let's play the game authenticating login we have an authentication let's see what is available for us to work with skins loaded there we have it the asset that we just created so this is it for this video on the next one we are going to see how we can manage uh, the players inventory because we can give this asset manually to players so see you there i hope you enjoy it thank you so much for watching keep developing and we'll do the next one